What's up, Thrashers, and welcome back once again to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel, and I am back with another CD collection update video. It's uh, kind of soon to do another collection update, but I figured I got a shit ton of stuff since the last update came out, and I'm actually already working on update number 11. This is update number 10, the 10th collection update video I've done since this channel has become more full-on metal going forward and such. So I got a pretty sizable stack here. One of the biggest stacks I've had in a while. Though, granted, <clears throat> I don't think there's going to be a bigger stack than the one I had back in, like, early, mid-November of last year. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, I got a nice little stack here. I'm going to go from the bottom up and show you what I got. So the first one we got is White Zombie La Sex Resisto Devil Music Volume 1. Yeah, this was the third album from this legendary groove metal slash alternative metal band with little hints of industrial, even though they didn't go full on industrial until their final album, the follow-up. Um, uh, I forget the name, but Astro Creep 2000. I try to remember the name of it off the top of my head and I couldn't for a moment. But this is my personal favorite White Zombie album because it's not industrial, it's just straight up, down the line, heavy, catchy, groove metal with some thrashy riffs here and there. I mean, after all, this album has classic songs like Welcome to Planet Motherfucker, Thunder Kiss 65, Black Sunshine, Soul Crusher, Cosmic Monsters, Inc., Knuckle Duster. I mean, just top to bottom, this is just fun, catchy, trippy stuff. And of course, Rob Zombie. Do I need to say anything else? No, I don't. <clears throat> so moving on to the next one, I got Vader, Solitude and Madness, their latest album from 2020. And I've been needing to get some more Vader in my collection up until this one. The only other one I had was Tidby et Igni from 2014. I've been needing to get some of the older stuff like Ultimate Incantation, De Profundus, Litany, among so many others because Vader is such a phenomenal band. But yeah, Solitude and Madness, definitely much thrashier than most of Vader's work, even though Vader's work's very thrashy with their death metal, but this one I felt like the thrash was definitely pushed even more forward and it's much faster and aggressive. So yeah, Solitude and Madness by Vader. If I would have listened to this album in 2020 and if I would have ranked it, it probably would have made top 10 for sure. But, uh, yeah. And actually, uh, mid-video fix because I pulled the wrong CD out. So just bear with me here. A first in the collection updates. But uh, actually, I accidentally pulled a Sodom album when I meant to pull this. Slipknot, Iowa. Of course, the classic second album from Slipknot. I've always been a Slipknot fan ever since I was young, first getting in the metal, and I heard Slipknot pretty early on. I've always had a soft spot for Slipknot, to me, out of all the quote-unquote new metal bands. Like Slipknot and such were like the only bands that really stuck with me throughout. And of course, this one was the last of their real kind of new metal sound before they would shift with Volume 3. But, I mean, the songs like My Plague, The Heretic Anthem, People Equal Shit, Disaster Piece, the title track, Left Behind. There's just so many, like, fucking brutal songs on here. And, yeah, definitely recommend for fans of early 2000s metal. Next up, I finally got an album from this band, even though I want to get their all-time classic. But I want to work my way through their 80s and early 90s material, and that is... Queensryche, and I got their second album, Rage for Order. After all, this so album I feel is most known for the song Walk in the Shadows, but still, this is some really underrated progressive metal that kind of... I mean, here's a little funny thing. Like, I always see sometimes whenever me and my mom are in the car together and we're going for a ride and I turn on Sirius XM and we go to, I go through the rock stations... And I find Hair Nation and sometimes will glance through. And I find Queensryche on Hair Nation. It's like, musically, they don't fit the bill. Granted, the look at the time, I don't know if it'll focus. 
But they did kind of look a little glammed up. Uh, especially uh, Scott the drummer, if it'll focus. Uh, yeah, right there. He does look like a chick, so maybe just for the look at the time <clears throat> they get put on that station, but musically, prog metal, basically like metal rush, Iron Maiden mixed in with it. So yeah, Rage for Order by Queensryche. And to keep on with the prog theme, I got a one I've been wanting to get for a long time, and that's Porcupine Tree's Fear of a Blank Planet. Yeah, this was 2007. This was their second to last album before, uh, uh, I believe it was uh, The Incident in 2010. But we're getting a new Porcupine Tree album this year, which I can't wait to check it out. But I mean, this album, songs like the title track, Anesthese, where you have fucking Alex Lifeson from Rush doing the guitar solo... And even Robert Fripp from King Crimson doing, like, soundscapes on Way Out of Here. I mean, top to bottom, six songs, but they all pack a punch. This was arguably the heaviest Porcupine Tree album. This is when, I think, even though it started with In Absentia five years before, it, they just kept getting heavier and heavier, and that was through Stephen Wilson working with Opeth. And I think this, in terms of becoming a progressive metal band, this was the album that kind of pushed them into that genre a little bit more. Less of the prog rock, more of prog metal. But I'm curious to hear what the new album's going to sound like. Is it going to be kind of like this? Or are they going to kind of go back to the softer prog rock sound? Or are they going to still try and push the heavier style forward? We shall see. Next up, I got a classic album that, uh, well... <clears throat> many people will be shocked to know that I didn't have it until now. And that is... Pantera Far Beyond Driven. I've just been... I just It just always leaves my mind to get more Pantera albums, because for a long time I just had Cowboys from Hell. Then I got Vulgar Display eventually, and now I got Far Beyond Driven. So I'm missing three good Pantera albums. Power Metal, Southern Trend Kill, and Reinventing the Steel. Once I get those, I'd have pretty much all the Pantera I could want. But Far Beyond Driven went to number one on Billboard in 1994 at the height of the grunge movement. And an album this heavy and this extreme being number one. Well, there you go. Songs like uh, Five Minutes Alone and I'm Broken are classics, but songs like Shedding Skin, Throws of Rejection, Strength Beyond Strength, Becoming, Slaughtered, their cover Black Sabbath, Planet Caravan. Masterpiece. Absolute masterpiece. Now we're going to get a little black metal here, because next up I got <coughs> a classic of Swedish black metal, Opus Nocturne by Marduk. Uh, after all this album, I mean, when you have a song like Sulfur Souls Alone, it's worth getting. And this was the second album of Marduk becoming straight up black metal, because whereas Dark Endless, their debut, was kind of blackened death metal almost, or just a hybrid of black metal and death metal. Then you got to their second album, which went into straight-up black metal, and then you get to Opus Nocturne, and pretty much crystallizing their black metal sound for years to come. And fucking evil. That's all I could say, so there you have it with that. <laughs> Excuse me. Now these next three, we got a triple pack of incantation albums. So I'm going to start with the oldest, end with the newest. So I got... Mortal Throne of Nazarene, so I already had Upon the Throne of Apocalypse, which is essentially this album, but the original mix and in reverse order of tracks. I had to get Mortal Throne of Nazarene, and while I will say I prefer the production on um, Upon the Throne of Apocalypse, the songs still hit just as hard on this album. I will say <clears throat> that the one advantage that I feel this has over Upon the Throne of the Apocalypse there's more clearer bass work on this one. Like, the bass isn't as prominent on Upon the Throne of Apocalypse. I feel like if they would have mixed in the same bass as this onto Upon the Throne of Apocalypse, then it'd be a no-brainer. But still, Mortal Thrones, a hell of an album. Songs like um, uh, Icon, or uh, how the hell do you pronounce that word? Uh, <laughs> shut up, phone. Uh, Iconoclasm of Catholicism, I believe. E like, icon Iconoclasm. 
I'll have to figure it out. I'm bad with some words, okay? But especially songs like The Ibex Moon and Abolishment of Immaculate Serenity. I mean, just what more can I say? Then I got, from Hell's Headbangers, I got the album uh, Primordial Domination, which I remembered watching uh, Thralls of Metal do the incantation ranking, and I remember, like, three out of four of the guys had this ranked pretty low. Nick had it in the top five, and I could see why the production on this album's pretty stellar, and it is definitely more death metal than death doom, so to speak. But, I mean, the production's kick-ass. And, yeah, this is a reissue from Hell's Headbangers because for a while you couldn't really find this album anywhere. This and uh, uh, Blasphemy and I think even Decimate Christendom, I'm not sure. I plan on getting all of Incantation stuff as well as another band that I'm going to talk about here in just a few moments. But, yeah, Primordial Domination. And I also got their latest, Sect of Vile Divinities. I mean, it's a hell of an album. Oh, it's upside down. I'm stupid. There we go. Sect of Vile Divinities, our latest one from 2020. This could have made my top 10 list had I known about it at the time. But songs like Propitation, Shadow Blade, Masters of Tempest, and Maelstrom, um, Entrails of the Hag Queen. <clears throat> I mean, there are some really, really fucking fun songs on here. And again, the production is amazing. Sucks this was the only album to have Sonny Lombardozzi studio-wise, because that guy's a hell of a player in his own right. But yeah, Sect of Vile Divinities. Next up, I got a classic black metal album from Norway's own Immortal, and that's Battles in the North. Yeah, this is a classic in the mid-90s uh, Norwegian black metal movement. I mean, songs like the title track, uh, Blash, Blashresk, Mighty Raven Dark, um, Grim and Frostbitten Kingdoms, Throne by Black Storms. I mean, this album's just chock full of great tunes. And I love, I love Abbot. He's, he's the fucking man. So there you go. Despite what I felt about his new solo album, can't go wrong with his stuff on here. Definitely check it out if you haven't. Now to the other band, similar to Incantation, that I said that I'm working on getting all their albums eventually, and that is Immolation, and I got the new one, Acts of God. I mean, I don't really have to go further into detail, because I've done the review for it. It's just evil, pummeling, brutal, technical, in-your-face death metal. If you want to know my full opinion on it, just go check out my review, and there you have it. Now we got a pair... From another band I'm slowly kind of working my way up to, and that's Hate Eternal, and I got both Conquering the Throne and Infernus. Conquering the Throne, like, holy shit, you want to talk about evil brutality, this is definitely a brutal evil album, and, you know, because Eric Rutan is a hell of a guitar player, and a hell of a vocalist, too, and writer, and producer, even though a couple albums you hear from Hate Eternal, or any album he's produced... The mix can be a bit off and sound crap, but then we get to Infernus, which was 2015 when this came out, and yeah, this is definitely another fun one too. I actually, in my next stack, have another Hate Eternal album coming, and you'll see what that one is when I get enough CDs to do another update for number 11, but yeah, I got Conquering the Throne and Infernus. <coughs> next up... I finally got this album after forgetting about it for so many years, Deicide Legion. For the longest time, I just had the first album, then I got Stench of Redemption a little while ago, and I was like, I'm missing at least one or two more classic Deicide albums, and this was definitely one I needed, because to many people, Legion's the best album. For me, it's a close second. I still like the debut more. I might get uh, Once Upon the Cross just to have it. I'm not the biggest fan of that album, though. It's good, but it's not anywhere near as good as this or the first album or Stench of Redemption. Then the other DSI albums, no dice. But, yeah, Legion, definitely when they kind of got a little more technical in their riffing. And Glenn's vocals definitely got deeper and more chaotic. So, yeah, DSI Legion. Now we got another pair of albums from the same band here. We got some decapitated i got nility and the negation 
Uh, Nility, I really, really like because, you know, they still kept basically kind of a similar style to Winds of Creation, except the production was a little bit more polished. Yeah, the drums may have been a bit, tr like the kick drums might have been triggered a little bit, but I mean, the songs are just fantastic, like Mother of War, the title track, and, and then of course, Spheres of Madness. That's like one of the greatest tech death songs and one of the best death metal songs in general of all time. This is a hell of an album right here. And then, of course, with uh, The Negation. Yeah, the last one with Sauron on vocals. And it's still heavy and technical at spots. But it still kind of retains a little bit more of that groove that you got a little bit of, little bit of on Winds of Creation. And I'm actually missing only one more classic, and that's Organic Hallucinosis, and I might get that soon. And of course, we got the new album coming out, which I'm still a little hesitant about, because I've not been the biggest fan of the last three Decapitated albums. But who knows, maybe Cancer Culture will shock me. <clears throat> Next up, we get to another album that came out this year, and another one I got off of uh, Hell's Headbangers, and that is... Death Hammer's Electric Warfare. I talked about this album in one of my Under the Radar episodes. This is a hell of a black and thrash album from Norway. It's so fun. Long songs, but they pack so much into those long songs with great hooks, awesome riffs, intense speed, chaotic vocals. Pretty much everything that black and thrash is all about. And you get it in a nice neat little bow right here. Now for these next five, we got the next five from the same band. So we're going to start off with Dark Throne with Total Death. So this one I had ranked somewhere in the middle of my Dark Throne rankings because I liked a lot of these songs. Earth's Last Picture, Black Winged, um, Majestic Desolate Eye. Yes, I like that song. Blasphemer. I mean, I, I think this is a pretty good album for Dark Throne standards. Yeah, a couple of tracks, maybe not the best, but for the most part, I really, really liked this. I think I ranked it number 11 in my Dark Throne ranking, I believe. I'll have to go back. Then I got Sardonic Wrath, and this edition's actually quite interesting because... Uh... Oh, I thought it was a two-disker. Uh... I guess it's just a one disc, but yeah, Sardonic Wrath, the last of the proper black black metal days of Dark Throne before they went into the punk era and then into their classic metal era that they're currently on right now, but with the black metal kind of coming back a little bit. Well, mainly in the vocals and production, but musically it's still very much classic metal right now, but Sardonic Wrath, I mean, I've talked about this album, songs like Information Wants to be Syndicated, Straightening Sharks in Heaven... Mon Tinker Seed, Sacrificing to the God of Doubt. Top to bottom, this is an awesome, awesome album from the mid-2000s. Then we get to three, or actually two from the punk era. I got Dark Thrones and Black Flags, which was one of the better ones in that era, because I really liked some of the songs like Oath Minus, uh, Blacksmith of the North, Grizzly Trade, Hanging Out in Hager. Launchpad to Nothingness. There's some really fun songs on here. Initially, I didn't like it because I wasn't the biggest fan of the Dark Throne Punk era. But this is one of the better ones. And then it got even better because it was more closer to metal. And that's Circle to Wagons. I believe I said it best in that ranking. This was essentially metal riffs mixed with the punk beats and attitude. Songs like Those Treasures Will Never Befall You, Running for Borders, Stylized Corpse. Um... Braunente Slotet, top to bottom, this is some killer stuff right here for their final album of the punk era, even though this was not really punk, it was just mostly the drum beats that were punk and the attitude, but this is more or less like a speed metal album, and it's fucking fun. And then the last Dark Throne I got, and that is Arctic Thunder. Despite what I may say about it, how I felt they were trying a little too hard to get back to the black metal a little bit, there are some good songs on here like Tundra Leech, Boreal Fiends, uh, Throw Me Through to Marshes. <clears throat> yeah, there are some fun songs on here too. I just prefer Underground Resistance, Old Star, and Eternal Hails a lot more. But we're getting close to the end. We only got four CDs left. Next up, 
one I finally got after I listened to the album last year. Cannibal Corpse, Violence Unimagined. Yeah, I, don't, I got the censored cover because it's hard to find the uncensored cover out there. But, I mean, well, you got the uncensored cover right there in the liner notes, at least. So, at least it's not a total loss. But, yeah, I mean, if you want my opinion on this album, check out my review for it from May or April of last year. So, yeah. Fucking phenomenal Cannibal Corpse album. Next up is another album some people be shocked I didn't have for a long time, and that's Bolt Thrower War Master. Maybe the best Bolt Thrower album. I still feel Fourth Crusade is the best, but War Master is a hell of an album with tracks like Unleashed Upon Mankind, the title tracks, Cenotaph, Destructive Infinity, Afterlife, I mean, Shreds of Sanity, Top to Bottom, just mwah. Death Metal Perfection from England. The uh, second to last one I got, we got Blood Red Throne Fit to Kill 2019. I believe I also reviewed this one when it came out in 2019. So, another case of if you want to know my full opinion on it, check out my review. And then the final one I got, we have. ACDC Highway to Hell. This was a classic that I've been needing to get. I still need to get a bunch more ACDC albums, but I definitely wanted to get this one because this is one of the best albums they ever did. May you rest in peace, Bon Scott. Title track, Girls Got Rhythm, Touch Too Much, Walk All Over You, If You Want Blood, You Got It, Night Prowler. Just, ah, oh, it's just, ah, oh, I miss you so much, Bon. So... There you have it. So that is my 10th CD collection update. And that was a pretty big stack right there. Like I said early in the video, I'm actually currently working on another stack. As I actually got some stuff coming here in the next few days. I went through like eBay, Discogs, even to Night Shift merch and Bandcamp and stuff. Still working on that stack. I'm going to definitely get some more here before too long. But, uh, yeah, that pretty much does it for this update. What's your favorite album out of all the ones that I mentioned? And until next time, horns high. See you in the next one. Their debut album, Obsessed by Cruelty, on Steamhammer SPV Records... Now, this, the interesting thing about this album is that there are two sessions of this album that was recorded during this time. The original session, which was actually released through Metal Blade Records in standard tuning, the label thought, this does not sound very good, you need to try again. And so they switched studios and producers and did a re-recording of the album and added an additional song after the Deluge featuring uh, Uva Christopher's who was by, known by the name of Asator, and yeah, two versions, one in standard tuning and one in D.